Hello, I'm Dr. Jennifer Vonk. I'm a professor of psychology at Oakland University in Rochester, Michigan. And I'm the co-author of the paper, Cat Calls, Exotic Cats Discriminate the Voices of Familiar Caregivers, along with my graduate student, Taylor Cruz, who conducted this research. Now, Taylor was very interested in cats because she had worked with them in the zoological settings for a long period of time and had noticed that cats can be responsive to vocal cues from their caregivers and their trainers. And she was interested in the role that speaking the cat's name might have on their behavior and whether they would respond differentially to familiar caregivers or differentially to the use of their names, regardless of whether their name was being spoken by a familiar individual or someone that they had never been exposed to before. And we were both particularly interested in this kind of cognition from cats because we really don't know very much about non-domestic cat cognition, despite the fact that there are large numbers of exotic cat species being cared for in zoological institutions. And there is a great amount of interest in dog cognition, particularly in light of the role of domestication in shaping their social cognition, and in particular, their ability to read human social cues. And while there is some work on domestic cats, there really is no work on non-domestic cats looking at similar abilities. We think this is really interesting because not only are dogs domesticated, they are also highly social animals that live in groups primarily. And this is in contrast to cats that have evolved from species that are not group living. The only group living cat is the African lion. And we were able to test African lions and a number of cats from other less highly social species. And we think that this allows us to tease apart the evolutionary selection pressures of having evolved to live in a group versus the process of domestication or the ontogenetic or developmental process of having been exposed to human caregivers throughout the cat's life. So we were interested in whether non-domestic cats that were non-social, but that had nonetheless experienced a great degree of interactions with human caregivers might be able to discriminate familiar human voices from non-familiar human voices, and whether they would respond more strongly when their name was used, and specifically if their name was used by a familiar caregiver. And to do this, we did a very basic playback study. Initially, we began with seven cats of five species in a pilot study, and on different sessions, we played them unfamiliar voices, uh, giving a simple cue like, hello, cat's name, how are you today? And we also played voices that were either very familiar to the cat, their primary caregiver, or someone that the cat had been exposed to, but maybe wasn't quite as familiar with, the least familiar voice. And we found the cats responded more quickly and for longer durations um, and with greater intensity when they heard a playback from their most familiar keeper. But we wanted to extend this finding, obviously, to a larger sample of cats and, and more species. And we were able to do this in a second study by uh, using the dishabituation paradigm, paradigm that had been previously used with domestic cats. And in this procedure, cats are presented with playbacks from unfamiliar voices, so three different unique unfamiliar speakers um, at an interval of several minutes, and then presented with a familiar voice. And then finally, another unfamiliar voice. And the idea is that they may just react to the playback initially because it's a novel sound being played in their environment. They will stop responding, but then they will respond with greater intensity and attention when the familiar voice is played if they recognize it as being distinct from the unfamiliar voices. Now, we didn't find this dishabituation effect where responses kind of started off high and trailed off, but rather we did find that the cats specifically responded 
with quicker responses, that is head turns or ear movement or vocalizations, when they heard the familiar voice compared to unfamiliar voices. And we found that they also responded with greater intensity to these familiar voices, and they responded for a longer period of time. So three different behavioral outcomes converged upon the same finding that cats were at least discriminating familiar voices from unfamiliar voices. Now, this result was true whether we included lions in the analysis or not, suggesting that the result was not dependent upon whether the animals were had evolved to live in groups. And also, we were able to examine whether the cats had been raised by humans or were mother reared, and we found that rearing did not have an impact on the results either. And lastly, it did not seem to matter whether the cat's names were spoken or not. So this was good news for the concern that keepers may have that having the public know the cat's name may lead the cats to be distracted by calls from the public. Rather, it seems that they attend specifically to who is speaking rather than whether their name is being spoken. Now, we cannot say that they can differentiate particular individual caregivers' voices from each other, we can only say that they seem to respond differently to a sound that is familiar versus unfamiliar. Um, but this is promising to suggest that these social cognitive abilities, such as heterospecific vocal recognition, can be present in non-group living species. Now, cats are typically considered relatively asocial, but we would like to point out that cats do raise their young, and this mother-offspring relationship may be very important in shaping um, other species' social cognition, even if they don't live in social groups. And so the takeaway that we would like readers to have is that social cognition should definitely be studied in animals that are considered less social, and we should consider other factors such as length of rearing and other social interactions as equally important in shaping cognition as having evolved to live in social groups.